Hello everyone, this is Debbie from Pixel Art Mysteries and Education, and I have for you today a tutorial on how to make a jigsaw puzzle mystery reveal. So thank you for purchasing this product, and I want to show you real quick how to do the edits, how to make it your own, how to change things and put your own content in. This, what you're looking at on the screen, is the uh, download that you just received and you probably clicked on this here to get to this video so welcome um, everything you need is on this page the image templates to make the different jigsaw puzzle images and then also the activity templates to make the put match your content with the images and make the activity we also have some written instructions if this is something that you are a better learner from reading on your own or if you want to just reference something quickly you can always go back to these written directions and it will take you step by step how to do the whole process. Okay, so um, I've already opened all of the links, um, but all of the links are on this, this page that you received. So you would just need to click on those and open and make a copy to get started. Um, and I will show you right now. We're gonna get started with making the images. In order to do this um, mystery reveal, um, we are going to do what appears to cut the picture into puzzle pieces like what you see here but we're not really cutting any pictures we are actually putting an overlay on top of a picture and making it appear as if the puzzle pieces are revealing themselves or being placed on a, on a blue table or on a blue background one at a time so in order to do this you'll need this template from google slides and all you have to do is choose a picture to change as the background so where I like to get pictures from most often is from Pixabay website, and they just have tons and tons of free images, royalty free, um, lots of different things that you can choose from. Um, for this project, since we're doing a square puzzle, you'd want an image that is a bit um, square in shape so that it doesn't get distorted when you make it the background. And I am gonna do this one on birds of prey so some kind of eagle or hawk or owl or something but i want it to be um, a square image so i'm just kind of scrolling through to something i think looks really cool that my kids would like oh i love this i love owls so this picture looks nice and square and it does have a free download so i'm going to go ahead and download this picture you don't need any particular size i there's no reason to choose a super large one it just makes all of your files a little bit bigger and it's not really necessary so uh, now we go back to our google slides we have our image it downloaded into this bottom tray of my screen and we'll need that here in just a second back in google slides we want to change the background for all of these slides and you do that by choosing the background button right here if you don't see a background button in this menu it's probably because you have an object on the slide chosen when you have an object chosen it gives you all of the menus for object editing so when you click off of that just anywhere else then you get the option to click on background so we open background and you know that you could change the colors of your background and you can also choose an image and you can go and search for the image that you just downloaded, or if it's sitting here on the bottom of your screen, you can just drag it over and drop it in this spot. So it just changed the background of this slide, but I wanted to change it of all the slides. And to do that, you click add to theme, and then you can click on done. And now that owl picture is behind every slide and every slide has an image on it, on it that is the puzzle overlay. So as you go through them, a new puzzle piece appears each time. Okay, so that's it. We've made our puzzle pieces. We just have to get them in a usable form now. So we have to download these into um, and, and place them into the activity. So let's move over to the activity and let me show you what we've got there. And then we'll jump back and forth to place the, place the images into the activity. So this is your activity currently on the first sheet there. So back on our activity sheet, you see we have questions here, one through nine, and we have an answer spot for one through nine. All of the templates are set to the answers being just the numbers one through nine. 
Your answers don't have to be numbers. You can use words or phrases. It's just that when the student enters the word or phrase, they have to enter it exactly in order for it to match and then reveal the answer. So this is the whole puzzle. I'm gonna actually erase all of these answers for right now so that we can watch this process one at a time. So if we go over to sheet two, down here at the bottom, choose sheet two, you will see the images that were on the page before. Um, here, real tiny in these boxes. It doesn't matter how big they are. Um, you could make these bigger if you need to see them a little bit better. Um, and that's up to you. Um, it doesn't really help me at all, so I'm going to keep them nice and small. Um, this is our answers over here where we put in our answers and whatnot. We'll get to that in a second. So this is where we need to put our images, but we have to get them out of the Google Slides first. You do this by selecting each slide. We'll start with number one. Click on File download and then choose PNG image and it downloaded it into my uh, bottom menu here which hopefully it does for you too because it's just so simple but if your computer doesn't do that figure out where it is where it goes where your download folder is set to go all right we've downloaded number one we're going to switch back to our activity template and in number one I actually have the same picture so I don't really need to replace it but I'll show you the process anyway you would click on insert image and then image in cell. That's what you want to choose, image in cell. And since it is down here, I can pull it over. And we have our first image. Now that first image is actually just a blank. It is um, showing here on the first, it's blank because what this is saying, these formulas are set up that if none of the answers are filled in, show me the blank. That's basically what the formula says. If none of these answers are in here, show me the blank screen. Show me whatever is in the picture next to blank. Okay, so let's do our next one so we can actually see something happening. We'll go back to our Google Slides, click on slide two, and then file, download, PNG image. You see it come down here at the bottom. We'll go back over to the Google Sheets activity on sheet two, in this first slot here, we're going to insert image, image in cell, pull that image we just downloaded right into the open window, and now we have image one set there. Let's go look at sheet one and see what happens. So our formula is set that when you have one answer right, you should see the first image. And sure enough, there's the puzzle. If you, You'll see if we go and we put two in, we get our old puzzle. That's the image set there in. There's two correct. So for now, if one of these is correct, you will see the first image that we put in there. They don't have to be answered in order, which is nice. If kids need to skip around and move things, they won't get to the end of the puzzle before um, working all of the problems. All right, let's do some more so you can really see what's happening and see the, the picture evolve. We'll go back to Google Slides, choose slide number three, file, download, PNG image. Back to Google Sheets. Here next to number two, we're gonna put in our next image. Insert, image, in cells. Drag this last file that we just downloaded into the open window. And voila, we have Number two, I like to go back to sheet one and just check on it. What happens if we have two answers filled in correctly? Sure enough, there's our second image. All right, I'm gonna do this a few more times and then pause the video so that you guys can do it on your own. File, download, PNG image. There it goes. Back to Google Sheets and sheet two. Next one down, this is number three. Insert image in cells. Take this from the bottom. And now we have image number three. If we go over to here to this one, we now see three in, the third image or what appears to be three puzzle pieces. It's kind of how you can match up where you're going. You've got three problems answered. There's three puzzle pieces showing. All right, I'm going to go ahead and finish this offline and let you guys take the time to uh, finish yours, get your picture in there that you want, 
and download your images and get them placed into Google Sheets. So one more time just for sending off and then pause the video. So we have our next slide selected that has four puzzle pieces showing. Click on File, Download, PNG Image. See it appear at the bottom. Go back to Google Sheets, next to number four. We want to insert image, image in cell. Grab this file. All right, number four images in there. Let's just check what happens when we have four correct answers. Sure enough, we have four pieces. All right, I'm gonna pause here and you should pause and finish the rest of your picture inserts and then we'll talk about how to change the content. Welcome back everybody. All right, you can see that I have all of my puzzle pieces on there. I have nine correct answers filled in and you can see the final picture. If you were to erase any one of these numbers, I have the picture start disappearing. Okay, so we have to now take this and put some content with it because the answers for your kids are not going to be one through nine. So you can put pretty much any kind of problem or question in here that has a specific answer. So it can't be open-ended. It has to be um, a single word or a phrase that can be typed exactly and easily by the students. You could um, offer a word bank. If you have something a little bit longer, you could make multiple choice questions if that is something that would be uh, suited to, to what you're doing and the topic you're covering. For now, because this is a, a video and I wanna do things quickly, I'm just gonna enter some simple um, addition problems in here and and we will go back and put the answers in and I'll show you where to put them so that they will reveal the picture. Because if I start answering these questions with the correct answers, math problems, the image disappears. Okay, there's just a few. Um, this looks kind of ridiculous because it's so big, so I'm just gonna make things a little smaller. All right, oh, too small, baby. All right, so we need to take these answers that we have here and put them on the answer page, which is sheet two. So sheet two holds our images and it also holds the problem answers and the formulas that make it work. So this is the problem number. There's no reason to transfer the problems over to this sheet. It's not necessary and it's simpler if you just leave this as one through nine. You just have to put the answer to number one in this spot. Well, the answer to our number one is 10. If we go back to this side, we'll see that we now have two puzzle pieces missing uh, because we have all of these other ones correctly filled in. Let me erase these just so I can speak about it in the positive instead of the negative. We have only one correct answer, only one puzzle piece is showing. Let's change the answer to our second one. Our second one is 12. Both of these answers are now correct on the answer sheet. They match what's on sheet two, so we have two puzzle pieces. The third one there, the answer is 13. All right, and now we have three puzzle pieces. Let's do another just to um, show you how it works again. All right, nothing happened when I put that in there because this is not the correct answer on the answer sheet. Once I change the correct answer here, then you'll see that we have four puzzle pieces showing because we now have four correct answers. So it's easiest if you go and you put all of your content in at once and then go back and change all of the answers at once. Um, being back and forth is always good. Uh, it helps you to keep track of mistakes. If anything is lost along the way, you want to know about it sooner rather than later so that you can get it fixed. Literally just typing in whatever my finger hits. All right, but now I need to go and I need to put these answers in the next page. So let's go 12, 13, 10. I'm going to type in 12, 13, 10. Now I have a total of seven correct answers at this point. That's what that number means down there. Don't touch the numbers or, or boxes in here. This is where the formulas are that make this whole reveal process work. So I have seven correct answers and I have seven puzzle pieces showing. My last two answers are 16 and 11. 16 and 11. Now I should have nine puzzle pieces showing because I have nine correct answers and sure enough I do. So that is it for 
matching the content that you put in there, taking the answers from here and putting them onto sheet two in the answer column. So you have to put images in here, you have to put answers in here, and that's it. Um, before you assign to your students though, there's some things you wanna do. You'd probably wanna type in directions for whatever the activity is, give your worksheet a title if you'd like. Um, make sure that the um, title up here of your document does not give away the picture that's inside. Um, so, and you can also change things on here. You saw me change the column width. That's perfectly reasonable. You could change the colors. Maybe you want all of this to be um, brown, like the, uh, to match the owl or something. You know, it's, it's totally up to you um, what you want it to look like. So all of those things are changeable, editable. They don't, um, they don't change anything to do with the formula when you make these changes. So when I put brown, it just kind of frames the whole picture in brown. So that's an option. You can do that um, if you change everything in all of the cells, they will all turn brown. The problems are still there. It might be a little bit harder to read. So you can, you know, just do the colors in between. It's really up to you how you like to decorate it. You, the, the last and most important thing is you need to hide these answers from the kids. So we need to make sure that they can't see what is on sheet two. So let's go to sheet two and I'll tell you some, some tips and tricks that I use for uh, hiding the answers. First, I hide the column that has the images in it. If you click on the letter L, there's a little down arrow, you can click on that or you can just right click and a, a menu appears and down here we have hide column. When you click on that, your column disappears. These little arrows up here means that there is a hidden column in between there. And if you can click right on it, it will appear again. Or when your column is hidden, if you can't get one of those arrows to, to click real tight, if you click on both of these columns together to select both of them and then right click, you can unhide the column. So there's different ways to get that column back. Now I, I changed all of the font colors here. You could select all of these like this, or a little trick that I love and use all the time is I click on this box that is above the one and next to the letter A. So this box up here, all the way up here in the corner, it selects every cell on the spreadsheet. And then I go to the font color and I change the font to white. So it looks like all of my answers have disappeared, but they really are there. They're just not visible because they are white. So we've hidden two things. We hid the column of pictures, we've hidden the text by making it white, and now we need to hide sheet two. If you go down to sheet two, you can right click on it, or you can click on this little arrow. Either way, it brings up a menu and you wanna click on hide sheet. So now the sheet is hidden, and it can be unhidden by you or by the students, which is why we do the process of changing the font color and hiding the images. It just helps that if they do try to look at sheet two, they won't see anything right away. So to view sheet two again, you go to the view menu at the top and hidden sheets, and then sheet two is right there in the list. There's one other way to find that hidden sheet, and that is down here, this little thing where it says all sheets, it's right next to the sheet one tab. When you click on that, it shows you that there are two sheets there. So if you click on sheet two, it will bring it back up. But again, sheet two doesn't appear to have anything on it when they first look, so it, it might throw them off. So hopefully, especially if you have kids doing addition facts like this, they would not be hunting for answers. But those are just some ways we try to hide the answers from the older kids who are set on uh, beating the system. So there you have it. You have to uh, make your puzzle images by doing the reverse and using that overlay in, gold, in Google Slides, making your picture as the background, and then putting those images into uh, Google Sheets, into the activity template, and then put your content in, transfer your answers to the answer sheet, and you have it. You are all set. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, our Leave us a message on our Teachers Pay Teachers store, or you can check us out on Facebook and YouTube. That's Pixel Art and Mysteries in Education. Thanks and have a great day.